you're listening to the Young the Mark Wrestling Podcast. A podcast covering all things WWE. I have now returned to save the WWE. NXT. The beautiful part of NXT is that when one dream ends, another dream begins. And they eat W. Holy wrestling. I couldn't be more happy. Here are your hosts, Kyle Gagliardi and Jim Tucker. What is going on, everyone? You're listening to the On The Mark Wrestling Podcast, hosted by the Marks, for the Marks, and I am your host, Mr. OTM, Kyle Gagliardi, and one of my co-hosts this evening is my good friend, Jim Tucker, or as I like to call him, Tucky! Life is good. The two of us. Uh, back together physically uh, a couple times uh, the, uh, as I've made my journey to the Midwest, and we are joined by um, the part timer and fully injured Ian Garavaglia. Ian Garavaglia, what's up, dog? Uh, yeah, I, I've had quite a quite a week so far. Uh, the crutch is back there, uh, but the only thing to heal me at this point is a weekend full of wrestling and uh, a night full of talking wrestling. So. Uh, why don't we get into it? Uh, yeah. Gags, our track record with buddies going to shows with us with blown out appendages <laughs> is uh, pretty good. Bogus. Made it through the Royal Rumble in St. Louis. Shit, that's right. I forgot about that. Once. Walked all the way back to the Airbnb post show. We Ubered there. Walked back. Drunk right. walked back. Stop at a pizza shop. Life is good. Life is good, or life was good, and it is good because of SummerSlam coming up this weekend in Detroit. Tucky and I will be leaving this Thursday. Ian will be taking off, I believe, still on Friday. The injury didn't push you back any bit, did it? No, uh, it'll be the same. It'll just make the drive a little bit more difficult. I will be leaving Friday after work, directly from work. I think it's a nice four-hour drive over to my brother's house, who is one hour from Detroit, and then I will be going to meeting you guys somewhere. And then after that, I'm I'm clear. I'm what happens Detroit. happens. What happens? What stay? Happens. What happens in Detroit stays in Detroit. I think they say that somewhere. But yeah, Ian, lots we're of dead bodies. Ian, let's get into this injury. Uh, uh, for the people that are tuning in, we're not doing this live. It's not a live stream. We're pre-recording this on a Tuesday. Ian got hurt Monday night playing wiffle ball. Uh, what's the latest update? And how you feeling? So yeah. Uh, We'll brush past the wiffle ball part because every time I've had to explain it, I've gotten laughed at. Like, what? Isn't that just tossing in the back? No. All right. It's serious. It's, it's life or death. But um, went into the doctor today because I was going to give it a week off and just kind of feel it off and see if it was anything to be worried about. Uh, tried to go to work this morning. Did not work out. Uh, mm. Did not go well. Not great. Then went straight back home, went to the urgent care center, got it checked out. But I think we're in the clear. I think it was just super sore this morning. Uh, but, yes, I blew out my hamstring while running to first base. And uh, there is a video, and it looks like it gets sniped from out in left field. It's kind of funny. I could laugh about it now. Anybody could laugh about it now. Uh, but, yeah, could just. I think it's just a really bad sprain is what they're saying. But nothing torn. There was no bruising at all. So I think we're, we're in the clear. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, still sucks. But best case scenario, right? Yeah, no surgery, It's at least so far. But I am getting an MRI next week just to make sure that yep. we're, we're all. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, selfishly, one of my first thoughts when I saw Ian go down, I goes, how does this affect SummerSlam for us? Are we going to have to, you know, handle this guy just limping around? And I'm, now that I'm realizing it, yes, we probably are. He's going to be crutching around Detroit. Uh, you still are going to participate in having a few brews with us, aren't you? Oh, of course. It's not going to affect the drinking and driving with the crutches? Yeah, no. Uh, if, if I have to drink and drive with crutches, as you just said, uh, yeah, that's fine. I could do that, too. Well, maybe you don't want to go on record <laughs> saying that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we will go on the record. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube at a later date, Tucky's not in his usual setup. He's back home. Is, is that your old bedroom? Uh, so this, we, 
three bedroom house, mom and dad's house back in Indiana, under 900 square feet for the five of us growing up. This is the smallest room in the house that at one point my parents chose the smallest room in the house so their kids could have the bigger rooms because they're they're cool like that. I've had this room. It's cub colors because it's the former man cave of my dad's. Once my dad was a full empty nester, he moved across the hall, took the second biggest room in the house for the man cave. Uh, he's got he's got a pretty pretty good setup, and he he's kind of inspired the setup that I have back home in Nevada. Don't know how long I'll be able to keep that. As of right now, the baby's going in the office. Oh, and I think that's a great place for this child. You know, um, right out of the womb. You know what? You're going to earn your place in this household. Um, you don't get the man cave right away. Who do you think right. you are? They're not the you head of the table. They're not the tribal no. chief quite yet. No. And if you go on, if you go on Peacock on my account, it says head of the table. <laughs> it is Roman Reigns profile. Mine picture. has Roman too. You know, um, again, we're going to crown the baby with a mini title upon birth. We will acknowledge their championship, but again, uh, they're going to have to be a working champion in this house. <laughs> you know, if they want to earn an actual earn your room. Key that their mother doesn't work in five days a week. You know what I mean? So uh, life is good. Baby Tucker going to have to finish the story, I guess. <laughs> We're going <laughs> to have to write their own up. damn story. We got to yeah. start the story Write that first. story, yeah. start the story, and finish the story, similar to what you just accomplished. I know we got some more news to share. Shh, tell us what's going on with the book, Tucky. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the book is live on Amazon. You can get the Kindle version. Um, please buy the hard copy because I get 14 cents per read on Kindle. Not great. Uh, so so uh, it is published. Hard copy is available. It's a paperback. We're working on the hard cover. Um, I, I've got some free coloring pages for download that I'm, I'm trying to get out there and post. And um, I've been so caught up trying to get it formatted properly to get published that a uh, little behind the ball with the Facebook page, the author page and the website, but it's out there can be consumed. A couple of people have ordered it already uh, excited for it to take off. Um, I've had, I've resubmitted it nine times since I've been in Indiana to try to format it. So wow. uh, we've learned a lot. So the second book should be much easier or predictable in the process um but super excited for that um yeah and and it's out now so you can get it in a couple days i did just check too uh there are two five-star reviews on the book already so it is a five-star reviewed book i just want to say five-star reviews only at this point i am half of those five-star reviews just why i just want to i just want to get it out there but i i should give my book five stars i think it's great right when presidents during presidential elections, do you think President Biden went in and voted for Trump? No, Hell he no. cast his ballot for himself, as you would. Oh, well, you know, he might get confused going up to the, <laughs> the voting stand. <laughs> that's, that's true. I cannot confirm if he actually. We really don't know for sure. Ballot. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm very excited to get my hands on that. I just purchased it. I got the hard copy on Amazon. So go ahead, support Tucky. Get yourself a copy today. Like you said, the Kindle would be nice, but it's only 14 cents. Not really doing much. Not moving the needle. Yeah. So let's you know buy if, hard you, copy. If, if you have Amazon Prime and that comes with Kindle Unlimited, you get it for free. So go in, scoop the pages up, buy 17 hard copies. Life is good. Amen, brother. You know, one person I know will definitely enjoy that book and the coloring part of it is my brother, Ryan. He's Big a wrestling fan, Absolutely. loves coloring books. I know he's going to need a copy. So you might get two out of the Gagliardi house. We'll see how many more you get. Hopefully you get hundreds on hundreds and, you know, we can just have a good ass time celebrating no Tucky's success on his first to, published book. I've got to figure out how to loop in the on the mark wrestling podcast into the actual story. Maybe have some characters be guests on the on the mark wrestling podcast show in the book. Erica Macaroni. Ooh, there we go. Erica <laughs> she makes her debut. We, I don't. I don't think we have any pasta people at this point. So I think Erica oh, Macaroni we, might. And we got the Gabagool below we got the us. Gabagool. I think I, book four is writing itself, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> two and We're three moving. are already. Two and three are already done. I've got the easy oh, wow. job. Write like eight, nine hundred words, and then have the illustrator illustrate yes. over forty images for the book. 
I've got the easy job, but it's exciting. It's fun. And now I have to make sure I type down Erica Macaroni. I don't forget that. <laughs> this is the creative team right here. We're, you know, we're helping Tucky out with the next couple books. This is creative. Yeah, you guys are bookers now. Welcome. <laughs> so you don't have to just end the weekend there by purchasing Tucky's newest book. You can go to the On The Mark Wrestling Podcast.com this entire week, the weekend. Dope. Use promo co- code SUMMER and you will save 10% off your order. Ian's got the the number one seller on right now. Show it off, the Honorary Mark t-shirt. We talked about it last week. You can get yours, and you can save 10%, like I said, by using promo code SUMMER for SummerSlam happening this Saturday, which, of course, if you didn't already know, OTM right here, plus Ryan Vogus, will be in attendance. Uh, Tucky and I are going to be hitting up some GCW in the third row Uh, this Friday as well. So if you are watching GCW on Friday, look for us there for sure. It's going to be an exciting weekend, boys. But uh, Tucky, I think you're the OTM champion. Am I thinking of the AEW title? I I think I am the AEW champion. Kine Kine is the pay-per-view champion. All right. PLE PLE champion. Give some respect to Kine. He is the GOAT. He is the GOAT. Okay. He is a, okay. All right. He had to double down on the go part, I guess. Yeah, the, the bromance <laughs> is getting real. The across the pond bromance between the two of yins. <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> I can't either. But, uh, Tucky, we should have a forum for them in about a day or two, right, for the predictions? Yeah, it'll be up tomorrow morning. I take my beautiful wife and the bearer of my child to the airport early. We're uh, departing the household at about 3 a.m. Oh, she's got a 5:30 a.m. flight. So um, the good news is, I know you got to get into a car for about four hours with me, but you don't have to drive, so you can relax a little bit at least. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, no three three a.m. The traffic shouldn't be that bad as we head no. up to Chicago. So shouldn't be. I mean, I'll take that. I just hate people. I, when I come back to the region, I forget how many like cars and people and traffic. There's just oh, drivers out here. So so many people compared to back to Nevada and I I lived this for 30 plus years and I'm like why why <laughs> you know it's a lot different honestly you it, probably every time you come home now you look around you're like that's there that's here another lane especially What's going, on? going to Crown Point like yeah Crown Point is popping off that's where I we got a Chick-fil-a it. did you see that Chick-fil-a five guys panda Sonic like y'all are eating in Crown Point I, I to literally are great yeah like so we are options. literally eating uh, yes, culinary misfits, square roots. You got so many options. Yeah. Rub getting... it in some more. I am jealous of that. We have nine Mexican restaurants in Nevada, owned by the same family. They oh. run taco <laughs> deals on different days of the week. It's like it's it's a, a weird fair play. It all tastes the same. I'm getting I'm getting tired of it. <laughs> I bet because only nine <laughs> is not not a lot of options out there, yep. Tucky. But we're glad you're home for the brief period of time. We're going to have a good weekend at SummerSlam. So let's get into that SummerSlam card. Starting off with some non-title action. This is going to be a very viral match here between Logan Paul and Ricochet. Uh, it's one where I think you can make a case for both of these guys. Uh, Logan Paul still looking for his first uh, singles win in the WWE and Ricochet is a guy that's kind of been heated up a little bit as of late. Tucky, I'll let you go first on this one. No rhyme or reason to it, but you're to my right. So I'm going to have you go first and lead us off here for the SummerSlam picks. See, I, uh, this, this match you have, this is why I like a lot of the matches on this SummerSlam card. Um, it's not mania level, but there's a lot of intrigue with many matchups. I love what they've done with Ricochet to shine the spotlight on him, put him with Logan Paul, a similar athlete. The viral ability um, is very high with this one, but you do kind of run into a lose-lose, win-win, can't-win situation. Logan Paul does need a win if you're trying to establish credibility and make him something other than the TikTokable dude. Ricochet also kind of needs a big win. They're, they're giving him time on the mic. They're giving him show. Um, they're, they're giving him back and forth with Logan Paul and I don't, I don't know where it goes. I think Ricochet needs it for his professional wrestler stock more than Logan Paul does, but how many times are you going to have Logan Paul come on and lose? The other thing that you can think about is the screwy finish, but I don't think it makes a lot of sense. 
because lo- I don't know that the Logan Paul ricochet rivalry is something that needs to get drawn out into a best of three. That's what more. I was going to ask you. Could you see this match happening at a payback? I, maybe like they, again, you know what you got, right? It's like old street profits, Usos, um, FTR and the Briscoes. Like, you know, you know, it'll be good. Right. But uh, I'm going ricochet here. This is one of my least confident picks. Yeah, this one's tough, Ian. What do, what do you think can go on about this one? Well, when, yeah, when I see it, what you said, Tuck, I think Ricochet needs it more for his wrestling career. I mean, this is the guy that has always struggled to get pushed and, like, constantly pushed. He's had his spots and moments of, you know, holding some mid-card titles and then immediately just get put in the backside again and kind of uses that athletic jobber to put on good matches. I think that's going to go to Logan Paul now. I mean, you could throw a name like Logan Paul out every single week. You're going to get eyes on the on, on the prize every single time. Um, so I think the smart business move would be putting Ricochet over here. And honestly, it could be uh, a way to expand this in this feud later on. But I don't really see that happening. But I, it, it's got to go to Ricochet, in my opinion. See, I just don't know. Uh, I mean, what you guys are saying is true. Both guys really need this win. Um, but I think Logan Paul uh, has more of a draw to him, obviously, with the mainstream audience. Uh, SummerSlam, like Tuck was kind of getting at, it's not as big as WrestleMania, but it's probably the number two show of the year. And I think Logan Paul getting a credible win over a guy like Ricochet, who's been on the main roster now for almost five years, I believe, would be beneficial more to Logan at this point. I think Ricochet is still fine losing to Logan Paul. I, I think he's credible enough after, you know, how many ever appearances he's had on these PLEs to take a loss here, bounce back eventually. And maybe he does have a rematch down the line, whether that be on Raw or another PLE. But I, I'm going to go with Logan Paul. Not confident whatsoever about it, guys. But I'm excited for it. Like, it, it could steal the show. And, and I think the... The argument for Logan Paul, too, is he could go for a heelish finish where Ricochet hangs on, competes, looks looks great, and gets screwed out of a win. So I think now I, now I might have just talked myself into that because Ricochet's got to win clean. He He's yeah. not going to pull a, ha- a heelish tactic. There's a run-in or a re-debut from someone. You could kind of make a triple threat thing heading towards payback, but there's got to be an ultimate payoff. Logan Paul can't be the dickhead and steal one from Ricochet without Ricochet losing stock. I might have just did an Erica Macaroni flip there. I don't know. <laughs> picks, picks are not official until the Google Forms are submitted, to be clear, as we workshop some of these matches. But again, I think we're going to have this conversation often with a number of these matches. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I think we're at an advantage for once. Uh, this show is not being ran live, so the form isn't out there yet. So we still can be swayed a little bit and change our picks because we know when we wake up tomorrow, that's when we are going to be filling it out. So it isn't final as we are speaking right now. So we might change our minds, people. Who knows? But we appreciate you checking us out, as always, here for episode 155. Let's move on over to another non-title match. This is a rivalry that just started recently with Shayna Baszler turning on Ronda Rousey at the last PLA to lose their tag team titles. Now they're going one-on-one. I believe as of right now of the recording, there is no stipulation attached to this. Uh, Not Uh, true. Ian, you might have an update for us. It is an MMA rules match, which I believe is just a fancy word for submission match. I think it's just really going to end up with a submission. Go ahead, Tuck. Yeah, it's an MMA rules match. It doesn't necessarily like maybe there's no five counts in the corners or off the ropes like if you're like i it's not super clear but that is the stipulation for whatever it is it's not a fight pit match which would have been kind of cool or not like a no holds barred situation where you can use weapons i'm assuming right i wonder if this is more like a british rules match where it's like there maybe there is no ropes. Maybe there is no ropes at all. You can't touch the ropes. You can't go outside. Kind of like blood sport. Or else you're just kind of like raw underground. <laughs> yeah, or NXT underground. <laughs> oh, did we lose Ian for a second here? He he looks like he's having some issues over there. I don't he's know what's the going on. Cutting out. You guys are cutting in and out for me. Oh, oh I I think we're probably fine. We're gonna keep going. We really don't know because, like I said, we're just recording this as is. But. 
Uh, Ian, you get to go first. I don't know if you can hear me or fully comprehend me right now, but uh, Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. You got a pick for us, or are you frozen over there? I think he's frozen. He does look frozen. Uh, I will give my pick, and I, I think all three of us are going to agree. It's going to be Shayna Baszler, right? Yeah. I, I don't. There wasn't really much explanation to it. I just think Ronda's probably taking a little break after this one, you guess? Well, and Ronda and Shayna are tight. And if somebody's going to elevate Shayna, her best friend in Ronda, who wanted to do the tag team stuff, a satisfying payoff. I really enjoyed the vignettes from Raw. Um, and both of them have compelling arguments as to why they should win or why they have a harder, tougher, better path than the other ones. And I actually got to credit Ronda Rousey. I think she came back with some good arguments saying, I, I, I came in the back door, like I, I got here, but I got here knowing nothing and had to learn on the fly where you've been trained and groomed by some of the best coaches on the planet. And I thought that was, I, I thought that was a good clap back. I'm going with Shayna Baszler. Um, be, like you said, because I, I just don't know that Rhonda's going to stay around. I don't, I don't feel like she in, in her heart, like needs it, like needs titles, needs runs. You know, maybe she's realizing she's maybe she's not as good as she thought she would be. I mean, I th- I still think in ring she's solid. I enjoy Ronda Rousey matches. I think she's had plenty of good ones with lesser names like Raquel Rodriguez, Liv Morgan. I think and her had good chemistry as well. Uh, it's just gotten to the point where what is there left for Ronda really to do in WWE? She doesn't have the equal star power as she did. You know, when she made that debut about four or five years ago, that's kind of worn off a little bit. So right now she's really just a full time WWE superstar, but they're still presenting her as this badass, which I'm not taking anything away from her. She's probably still a badass, but I think the star power has kind of fizzled out a little bit. So, you know, put the shine on Shayna. I think even if Ronda was sticking around for a little bit more longer after this, that Shayna probably still would get the win just because she probably needs it more and Ronda's already done enough. It just, it's gotta be Shayna, right? Gotta be Shayna. Yeah, I think so. And I'm expecting this one to be pretty good. Uh, given that they, ha- their friendship and chemistry. If, if, if I'm going to go into a fight and in, into a dog fight, like, like in pro in a pro wrestling sense, I feel like you and I would have a harder match compared to me and somebody I'm not as familiar with, right. That we have that level of trust. So yeah, I'm expecting a good match, uh, and I hope this isn't one of those ones that gets cut because of time. It seems like there's always a women's match. It ends up – they had it um, cut. They had their tag team match cut, and Shayna had to turn heel earlier, like awkwardly earlier in that match, like seven minutes in or something. So I'm hoping they give it some time. I don't need it to be 40 minutes, but like 18, 17, 20 minutes. I think they can throw it down. And, and make Shayna look tough because they need challengers. Yeah, they definitely do. Uh, I don't think this match will get cut just because there were two matches I wanted to talk about that didn't make the card. Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus is not happening at SummerSlam anymore. Mm-hmm. And then the U.S. title match that we kind of just assumed, they never really announced it, that would be happening at SummerSlam. That's not happening either. So I still think they're going to you know find room on the card for Shayna and Ronda Rousey. Uh, Ian, are we back? How's everything going down there? I think we're back. Uh, let me know if there's any audio issues because my headphones just stopped working, so running out of the computer system right now. Don't know As what happened. Ra- I think the cord just failed on me. Well, and it'd be like that. Just like your hamstring, sometimes it doesn't go the way we think it will. Um, <laughs> we're getting is. no echo or feedback on our end. Yeah, like you're good. good. So, Ian, what is your pick? Uh, assuming you were going to go with Shayna there. Yeah, I was going to go Shayna. I mean, uh, again, it just makes sense. I There's been talks about Ronda wanting to leave the company. She's not happy where she's at. She's not happy where the women's division's going, which, I mean, to be fair, where she's being put at with the women's tag team or where she was at the time, I don't know. Unless this feud could really take off and get seen as a almost, I mean, I hate to say it, like a main event kind of feud or like middle card feud. I don't think she's happy. I think she's going to want to leave. So might as well give that rocket to Shayna. She's deserved it. She's been around for a long while in the uh, wrestling community. So might as well give it a shot with Shayna. Yeah, and a lot of people. I've been already seeing some Rumble favorites for next year's Rumble. They say Shayna Baszler's top three right now in odds. So 
something to keep an eye on. I know we're very far away from that, but uh, yeah, we all got Shayna Baszler defeating Ronda Rousey. So I think this match right here might be the last match on the card that is not for a title. And it is between the American Nightmare and Brock Lesnar. Uh, this is the rubber match. We've already had two matches with these two. And I think the writing has been on the wall ever since this feud started on Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. We assumed it was going to be a trilogy. They've dragged it out to be one. We've gotten one win apiece. It only makes sense for Cody Rhodes to finally and cleanly get a win over Brock Lesnar because he still has to be that guy that's eventually going to take that belt away from Roman Reigns, in my opinion. So the only way to do so is winning the feud with Brock Lesnar. So I, I think Cody's going to definitely win this one at SummerSlam, Tuck. I'm with you there. Uh, Cody gets a satisfying win, uh, pays off the feud, and then that uh, positions him well. I, do, I don't think he goes right to Roman next. I'm no. interested in who the next feud is with. Well, I'm um, sure you saw the report that there's rumors that Bray Wyatt may be facing one person after their match at SummerSlam to set up a feud. So mm -hmm. maybe Bray Wyatt and Cody Rhodes is something they go towards after this. Yeah, could be. But then the, Bray debuts to lose to Cody. Cody loses to a returning Bray. It's a tough spot, yeah. <laughs> Maybe Bray then is going after Roman, but and now we're thinking too far ahead of things here. Uh, Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar, though. Ian, I know you said you're wearing your Brock Lesnar shirt to SummerSlam. Does that mean you're siding with Brock in this one or no? Honestly, the more I think about it, a loss to Cody Rhodes at this event from Brock Lesnar, you know how much hate Brock Lesnar is going to get from that? Um but I'm not going to actually sway myself that way. I think Cody needs to win. I, <laughs> I, I saw really, what you were trying to do there. <laughs> I know. I really want that to happen, though, because I think that would be incredible. Because that would, I mean, it would give, I mean, people are complaining about Cody and Brock still going for however long they've been going. I don't think it's a bad feud. It's it's literally a bully. That's, yeah. that's what it all is. It's a bully storyline, and Cody's going to have to get that win at some point, and that win's going to feel amazing. So if it happens at SummerSlam, uh, great. Again, but if it happens later on, I see no issue in that, too. So I could see yeah. this going either way, in my opinion. It was assumed by a lot of us that were at WrestleMania when Cody lost that we were going to get Cody versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. Unfortunately, we're not getting that. But if he were going to face anybody else at SummerSlam, I think Brock Lesnar is probably the second biggest name that he could be facing. So I'm not too mad that Cody got this match here at the second biggest PLE. But all of us... We're siding with the American Nightmare. It's a clean sweep once again. Cody Rhodes to defeat Brock Lesnar. So we got a bunch of title matches up next. Let's go to the Intercontinental Championship match between Gunther and Drew McIntyre. Another very, very difficult one to predict. Tuck, unfortunately, gets to go first. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to go with this one myself, Tuck. And we just started recording, so good luck. <laughs> I'm going... Uh... I'm going for a banger, right? This will be a great match. The the teeter-totter that you have, the line, the drawn in the sand that you have to figure out which side you're on is the fact that Drew McIntyre is making a red-hot return. Um, but on the other side of that line, you have Gunther approaching a record uh, for a title reign, and we know WWE likes their records. So... Um, I'm going with Gunther to retain because the mm. record is close. About as confident as the Logan Paul Ricochet one. I think I already flipped on that one, and I'll probably pick Drew here in about three minutes anyways. So, Yeah. Yeah. Look forward to it. Uh, this, one, I, this one's my least certain one, obviously, for obvious reasons. Um, but I'm also going with the Gunther retain for the fact that, <clears throat> I mean, you have something cooking with Chad Gable. Right now, I mean, the fans are behind him, like severely behind him right now. Yeah. Uh, so I and I think he just had that nice match with Gunther as well on Raw. Uh, I mean, that's something to get behind, and that's something you could he cook, beat the right? clock. Like, yeah, I mean, payback. You could have something with Drew and Gunther again. I mean, that's what the whole thing about payback is. Uh, but I mean, you need something for Survivor Series or whatever that PLE is going to be called. That could be something with Chad. Chad could be 
messing around with it, but I think Gunther will get the record because I, I think WWE is starting to see it too as this period might be one of the greatest of all time. This era of wrestling in WWE, I think this might they might start noticing like we're actually the golden era. Here. It's the golden era, correct? So I, I think they want to set all the records now just to look back on it however many years in the future and be like this was where it was at. So oh, there's no denying talent wise, athleticism, just the full package. There's so many big names in today's wrestling. And it's not just WWE. Like there's huge names in AEW, New Japan, and all these other independent companies that are running. Yeah, this has to be one of the greatest years, if not the best, in professional wrestling history. But that match that Gunther, Drew McIntyre, and Sheamus had at WrestleMania was fantastic. Obviously, you're taking away Sheamus here, but still two of the best going at it here for the IC title. It's tough because I think we're, I think 40 or something days away from breaking the record. So we're not that far away from it. And I think since we are that close that Gunther is going to retain here as much as I want, I I want Drew McIntyre to have a moment. I think this is a guy that definitely deserves a little bit more shine just because all of his big accolades that has happened over the past couple of years happened during COVID when nobody was there. So I think he needs a couple big moments, but I still am going to have to go with Gunther to retain. I don't feel confident with it, but if Drew down the line, whether that's at payback or SmackDown raw takes it away from him, I wouldn't be mad at that. Like Drew McIntyre is the next IC champion. I don't think any of us would be mad at that. And I think too, if Drew McIntyre loses here as well, I mean, you get Again, as I said, if you lose this big match that you're supposed to have where it's your big moment, that just builds for a bigger moment later on, and that could still be after he gets that record. So I don't I don't think this kills Drew at all. I think it just delays his big moment. I mean, he just came back. So yeah. why not give him something? Maybe you could spark something new with this character because, like we said, we've talked about it before. We've been, He's been needing something. I mean, instead of the one, two, three Claymore thing, I mean, let's move on, see what else he could do. Maybe yeah. to a darker side. So, yeah. Tuck, do you think if Drew McIntyre loses this match, he's going to be harmed? Not if it's a banger. Like, um, again, he could get screwed over too in the finish where Gunther retains, keeps the rain going, but Drew McIntyre gets screwed out of it as well. So, I, I think he can take a loss. I, I don't know that he can take an ass beating. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's a tough one. We'll see. I won't be surprised if Drew wins, but I, I, I got to go with Gunther. I got to go with Gunther to retain. So we got three more matches here. Let's go to this triple threat match for the women's title. It is Asuka, the champion, taking on Charlotte Flair and Bianca. Uh, three of the best in the business, simply put, Ian. Uh, Asuka just won that title from Bianca Belair. Charlotte wanted her rematch, is getting it. So it's all concluding here at SummerSlam. Uh, Another one where I think you can make a case for all three of these women in this match. Yeah, I I agree. Again, this is another one. I think this is probably my second most uncertain. I don't know what's going to happen, but every single time she's on a match, especially with a championship, I keep leaning towards her and I'm going to go with her. It's the goat. It's Charlotte. Mm. Uh, I mean, keep building that record. You know this. I mean, people are going to hate it. (laughs) But that's the reason for it. Uh, you could also build off of that. If Charlotte just sneaks her way in, wins the title, I'm like, what, what happened here? You still have more to build from it. So Charlotte gets the title here. When you say Charlotte is the GOAT, do you believe that, or are you just going off of what she, other people say? She's the woman's GOAT. Okay. Mickey so James I'm... is my number two. Hmm. Interesting. I wouldn't expect that answer out of you. Uh, it's Wild. It kind of, <laughs> I mean, Mickey's <laughs> accomplished a lot. I don't, she I don't, is. You know she, how I rate my goat. Be considered top five, I think for sure. Longevity. That's that's those are my goats. That's not a word. <laughs> long, 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 longevity. Longevity. Longe- longevity. <laughs> hey, we're making up new words here. I love it. Uh, His vocabulary is on crutches too, folks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Charlotte winning obviously wouldn't surprise anyone, just because that's what she does and. I mean, she's my goat as well, one of my favorites. I don't want her to win this, though. I think that Asuka deserves a little bit more of a shot with this belt. Uh, Granted, I'm not sure what happens to Bianca Belair after this. Maybe she dives in fully into the heel run if she's not successful in regaining that title. 
and that's how you spark that. But I just think Asuka needs a little bit more of a chance. Tell some stories, cut some promos, and have a longer reign and not just be, you know, that filler champion that she typically has been throughout her career. So this is more of a hopeful pick. I'm going with Asuka just because I think she needs it the most. But, I mean, if Charlotte wins and Bianca wins, I won't be surprised. More, more. I'd be surprised if Bianca win. Let me rephrase that. If she wins, I'd be surprised, but not Charlotte. What about you, Tucky? I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I think Asuka wins, uh, and kind of establishes some credibility with this run even further. I think Asuka's a great candidate to hold the title. You have the triple threat, so she, she can sneak the win where she doesn't absolutely dominate, but she can sneak the win. I think she's a good champion to put up against some younger up and comers like Shayna Baszler could challenge uh, Raquel, like some of those lesser known or lesser established names where like Oscar can build credibility. They get title matches. When you think about Charlotte or Bianca, you might not want to put some of those names up there against them right away. But I think Oscar wins. Uh, I think Bianca is the third likely, like you said, Um, I wouldn't, be surprised if Charlotte wins. I think this is a good match to send stories onward. I don't know where they're going with it. Here's something that nobody's even brought up yet. And I'm not going to do it on my predictions because I don't think there's any way to actually predict it. But I think something's going to happen here. I think we might get a cash in. Whether it's in the middle of the match or at the end, EO Sky has been heavily teasing that cash in. They love to pull the trigger quick on these women's money in the bank, you know, tenures. So I think EO cashing in on Asuka is a great way to start that feud. You have Charlotte and Bianca continue their own feud one-on-one. Maybe it's just me fantasy booking, but I could really see an EO sky cash in here at SummerSlam. Gags, I have a question for you now with EO. Does she cash in after the match when everyone's bad and beaten up? Or does she cash in early and make it a fatal four-way? I do it during. I, I say make it a fatal four way. Whether they do it at the actual start of the match or you let them get beat up a little bit, I think it'd be more exciting to do during the match. Talk if she were to cash in, which one would you prefer? You could also I I like the like I like the chaos of like a run in cash in in the middle of the shit. I think that's what money in the bank is best for. Like using the briefcase to earn like a fair shot is the dumbest shit to me. <laughs> I'm going to wait until somebody has got their ass beat before I try to pin them. She's had a number of not failed cash ins failed cash in attempts. Uh, you could also continue that where um, she's thinking about it. Oscar ends up getting the win and looking at EO and saying, what the hell, you know? All right, well, let's just, let's just square up for it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I they they I feel like they continue to try to make statements with these PLEs, um, and this is certainly a match where I think they could do that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if EO gets involved in this one. I'm hoping for it. I don't know why I didn't think of it earlier, but my pick is going to be Asuka still. So Tuck and I are going with Asuka to retain. Ian's going with the GOAT Charlotte Flair, correct? Correct. Not a bad All pick. Right. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's it's like going up and going up and picking the Yankees, you know, like they they're going to win a championship eventually. Uh, two more matches. Uh, we got Seth Rollins, the world heavyweight champion, taking on Finn Balor. And of course, the cash in could be a possibility here as well. Damian Priest, senior money in the bank. Finn Balor, a part of the Judgment Day. That's going to be a factor. That's going to be the biggest story, I think, in this match. Uh, the history, obviously, the seven years of telling the story of the very first Universal title match, all culminating kind of here in 2023. Uh, I'm going to go with shit. That's not the official pick. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. I, you know, initially, I was saying Seth Rollins. I went in here. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. Finn Balor is going to become the new world heavyweight champion. I don't really have any rhyme or reason to it. I just think, you know, he he lost his first attempt. Losing another one to Rollins would kind of hurt him. This new world heavyweight title is kind of supposed to be, you know, the workman's title. So have it flip from time to time. I think a good 
person to win it would be Finn Balor. So why not do it here? And then you could tease that throughout the months going on within the judgment day of a potential cash. And I think that's where the money's at. So I'm going with Finn Balor, Tucky. Yeah, you have a, you have a strong case. And I think I'm leaning towards Balor right, right now on this podcast as we record. I am saying Finn Balor with the priest, money in the bank, shenanigans in the wings somehow. The other thing you can float out there is that Damian Priest cashes in on Seth Rollins, like Ooh. in the middle of the match where Finn yeah. Balor's down and out, Priest runs in and cashes in. Then you have Finn Balor, Damian Priest, which is something I would definitely like to see um, where the, the briefcase is out of the way. What happens? Are they going to do Finn the way that they did Edge? You know what right. I mean? And Damien says, you know, I'm I'm the captain now, or they let Rhea become the leader. Like, yeah. you know, it's interesting because I was not that into Judgment Day at the beginning. Like, un- until people started shitting on Dom, the Rhea and Dom stuff is great. Damien s- can sometimes get sloppy on the mic where he trips it, like he feels a little overscripted sometimes. But um, he's new; they're giving him a push. I like to watch him wrestle. Uh, I'm going with Finn Balor. Confidence, again, on this one, this is tough. This is going to be a tough pay-per-view for Kine to retain, I think. I think so, too. It's not very chalky. No, it's not, which is rare for a WWE PLE. Usually you can see the writing on the wall, but a lot of these matches I can see you going either way. So, Ian, what do you got for this one? I hate to copy you guys both, but I'm also going to Finn Balor here. Um, I was it's not good for towards- Finn. I, I mean, I was leaning more towards your <laughs> idea, Gags, uh, with building the storyline over time. I mean, everybody in Judgment Day has some sort of gold. I mean, if you count the Money in the Bank briefcase as gold, um, just imagine. Gold of Jays. Yeah, it, just imagine that imagery of everybody in the Judgment Day with a strap or, or a, a briefcase. I mean, you have stuff to build from it. And, I mean, you could still get to that Finn Balor kicking him out of the Judgment Day. You could still get there. Um but honestly, since we're recording this on a Tuesday, I come am, Tuesday. Come Tuesday, I am. Yeah. Uh, what <laughs> happens with NXT? What happens there? What do we yeah. see with that? With Judgment Day and NXT? Do you? I mean, and again, if Finn Balor wins a title, does he bring it down to NXT while Judgment Day are still down there? I mean, Dom still has the Dom like, still champ. Team. Yeah. So you have a lot to build from the Judgment Day, which is perfect because you they. I mean, arguably, they're your number one heels besides, I mean, Roman Reigns. But you have so much to build from in every single brand, which is the best part about it. I think that's kind of what we're all saying here is just like Balor makes more sense because I think there's more to a Balor title reign than what you can do with next with Rollins. Because if Rollins retains, it's like, what, where are we going now? Then we have to restart something. The ball's already rolling with the Judgment Day, the Money in the Bank briefcase. Now let's add a World Heavyweight title to it. Another World Heavyweight title since Rhea's already got one. You got two in there. And North American champion. It sounds like money to me. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're all going to be going with Finn Balor to become the new World Heavyweight champion. And no cash-in, right, guys? Everybody's saying no cash-in here I at SummerSlam? No cash-in. I think that I think there's a lot of tension you can play out and draw out over the weeks between that to build it i don't i don't know that you need that cash in especially if eo if these matches are back to back which they could be if eo runs in and you have money in the bank shenanigans there you know it Mm. could you could say double cash in night SummerSlam most because they love to talk their stats yeah that's true uh i i think i say hold on to it as well Double cash in night. And now that you put that out there, uh, it's got me thinking. They do like shit like that. They would advertise the hell out of that. Um, This match is for the title, the undisputed title in the WWE. And it definitely is going to be main eventing because that's just what the Tribal Chief does. Roman Reigns looking to defend his title against his cousin, Jey Uso. Still one of the best things, if not the best thing going in professional wrestling. Uh, you know, we haven't seen the elders show up. They've been teasing it a lot. It's something I still think could happen. Uh, this is a, what, what are they labeling this match exactly? What's the verbiage for it? Tribal combat. Which essentially I think is anything goes. 
Correct. Anything goes. The thing that makes it tribal combat, it, when Roman set that lay on top of the belt, they're not only going for the title, but they are going for the head of the table ship, if you will. Hmm. Okay, so I think Ian's up first. You I get to lead so. us off here for the main event. What you thinking? So, I mean, this is the one I'm most certain of. In, in my brutal honesty, uh, I think Roman Reigns retains... Uh, there's no other man to stop him besides Cody Rhodes, in my opinion, and that will happen at some point eventually. Hopefully, um, Bronson Reed. We don't want to talk about that. <laughs> That's oh, come on. <laughs> you talking about the reaction I get when I walk into my house every night? That's the same reaction Bronson Reed gets. <laughs> Full disclosure: Crickets. That's a no soul. <laughs> Just the air conditioner in the building. <laughs> right. But yeah, so, I, I mean, you you said it with the the elders still. You still have that. I mean. You could still keep feeding that. This storyline could go on forever. I mean, it's yeah. literally all about life and childhood and bringing it all back. It's there's so much to build from it, and there's still so much more to tell about it. So, and I mean, they're just now bringing the whole tribal combat into the story in yeah. the fact that Roman can lose that head of the table leadership if that's brought into the equation. So, I mean, even bringing like a legend back that was part of the yeah. family and having a match with that you see it? so much. If you smell, do, 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 do. what the rock? We got our hey, we got a writer strike going on in Hollywood right now, boys. Oh man, I I mean I hate putting it out there two weeks in a row. Rock's not I, shooting. The rock's got nothing going on. I mean I know he's selling Terramana because I'm selling it for him. You're welcome, <laughs> Rocky. Now do me a favor, show up to Ford Field and join us for SummerSlam. We want the rock there. That's all we're, we're seeing. Saying. Section one twelve. Mr. Johnson. One got a free rope. free seat right next to us. We'll kick Ian out of there. He's handicapped. He can't. Well, move. He's got Ian has to sit in the handicap seats anyways. Yeah, I don't think he can actually sit with us. So is he really gonna have to get no handicap seating? <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with the crutches. Honestly, he might if though. He, like his look he's his dragging thing. them ho ass crutches around. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the crutch. I don't <laughs> lay them flat on the bottom. That's all yeah, you gotta that's do. True. That's a fair point. So you're going with Roman Reigns, correct? Correct. Yes. I think Damian Priest is going to cash in on Jay Uso to win. The- no, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be something that happened in like a video game or something. But uh, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's an obvious choice to go with Roman Reigns here. Uh, I'm interested to see what's going to transpire because with it being the, the tribal rules match or whatever it's called, you know, Jimmy Uso could return. Solo Sokoa's involvement. Paul Heyman or an elder like a Rikishi or something showing up. There's going to be a lot going on here, as always, with the bloodline. But ultimately, Roman Reigns is going to defend his title and still be the champion walking out of SummerSlam. Tuck, what you got? Uh, That is the sentiment. I will be wearing my and still Roman Reigns goat tank top to SummerSlam. Um, Austin Theory is not on the card, so I'm just going to hold on to that one. But... um, yeah, I think WrestleMania kind of fucked me because we uh, the entire building was ready for Cody to win, and then Roman won. And now it's like, don't I'm not betting against Roman until somebody else. I don't know. Like the the tipping point hasn't been reached between Jay and Roman. It's just been hot, and like I I think it's too soon for Jay to win realistically. So I'm going with Roman. And I, I think I think everyone this might be the only sweep on the card. Uh, so I, I think Shayna might be sweepable in the prediction. Shayna well. would probably be, yeah. But yeah. no, it's like you were saying, man, it's a it's a very unpredictable card, which is exciting for us. I, I love going to shows no matter what. But like when you go into matches and you're like, I'm really not sure what's gonna happen here. I'm just gonna sit in my seat and be a mark. That's gonna mm-hmm. be me. I'm gonna have my Cody Rhodes jersey on, ready to go, the American Nightmare. Taking down Brock Lesnar. Fuck you, Ian, wearing your Brock Lesnar t-shirt. We have a rivalry now. We have heat. <laughs> you wouldn't beat him. Yeah, but he's a got a crush, so try yeah, you wouldn't beat him a cripple. Oh, have an equalizer. I guess you do. It's no, if it's no holds barred, you're in great shape, Ian. Woo! If it's, if it's submission, I'm just putting you in a <laughs> <laughs> half <Staff> crab. <laughs> yeah, half <laughs> crab, and Ian's dead. Oh, <laughs> God. It'll be a squash match for sure, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's the SummerSlam card, guys. Uh, we were going to 
try to keep it shorter and that we did about 50 minutes here and we weren't even live just imagine if we would have went live and all the interaction we usually get probably would have been a long boy but hey we're in and out and where there's going to be no mvm obviously this week hold on the hold MV- on, hold on. wait what you got uh and still mvm is kind give him oh some my respect. god he, he survives another dude's week nuts. you don't even give him any respect come on thank he you wins thank by you. default Thank you. Congrats, Kind. I'm throwing up your graphic now. I would you still can for- watch this YouTube video, by the way, people. Just, just saying. Kind, I would stand for you and clap, but I, that ain't gonna happen. I, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Give him a standing ovation, Ian. Come on. For uh, do you, would you like some updates on you know SummerSlam weekend? Should we give people that maybe not may go to this show but not, are unaware of some of the happenings? We've got. Um, yeah, might as well. We've, we've got some meet and greets and things that people may be interested in. We know the Summer Sam Superstore is happening. The Summer Slam Superstore is Thursday through Sunday, um, uh, Summer Slam weekend. When it comes to meet and greets, there they added one. Okay, so Thursday you got Riddick Moss and Emma from at three p.m. Thursday you got Zoe Stark from uh, at six p.m. Omos is Friday at noon, and Bronson Reed is Friday uh, from 4 to 6. They added Tommaso Ciampa on Sunday, 11.30 a.m., so that was kind of a cool one. I'll be out of town already. I'll be home uh, at that time. Um, a couple other good ones. I know that you and I are interested in meeting Seth Rollins and Rhea Ripley. That is on Friday, sponsored by C4, so you can look up C4 for that one. Um, they've got that person. Not a sponsor of OTM. For the record, not a sponsor of OTM, but I did just buy two tubs of pre-workout because the WWE logo was on it. Um, very effective marketing. I got bare knuckle blood orange and pomegranate pile driver. So that's something. <laughs> two points WWE. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> um, and then another one that we as a as a group have not discussed, but feels uh, pretty good. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, August 5th. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the Cricket Wireless in Madison Heights, Michigan. Okay. So Not that sure one, that's that a Saturday, August 5th. That one's kind of dope, similar to the one we did with The Miz. Uh, WrestleCon's up there, um, if people are interested in that. $10 a day, a lot, of, a lot of people to meet and greet there. List, not that titillating. Did not titillate our senses the way we no. were hoping it would. But um, a lot of fun activities. Uh, during SummerSlam weekend, one of my favorite weekends of the year. Hoping to continue the tradition. I'm only going to run into shit if they go like super East Coast. That would be tougher to get back from. But hopefully next year, another Midwest SummerSlam we can make it to. Um, it's going to be exciting. We are days away from heading up there. GCW on Friday as well. Um, really excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully we'll be spending less on merch than I did at Mania. No guarantees. <laughs> No promises. That's for damn sure. But yeah, like Tuck said, if uh, anybody's going to SummerSlam or you know anybody going to Detroit this weekend, let them know OTM will be there. You know, just hit us up at Pot on the Mark. Send us a DM and maybe we can meet up and hang out for a bit because the boys will be buzzing at GCW and at SummerSlam this Saturday. Don't forget this week and weekend, all week, you can use promo code SUMMER at the On the Mark Wrestling Podcast.com and you will save 10% off your order. Get yourself an honorary Mark T-shirt like the one Ian is wearing currently on the screen. And Tucky, for one more time, tell them where they can find your first published book. If you need a link, it's on my personal Facebook. It's on my Twitter. Uh, On the Mark has reposted the links. If you just go to Amazon, type in Food Fights Jim Tucker. Now, there's many books titled Food Fight or Food Fights, um, we type in Food Fights Jim Tucker, it's going to be the book you th- you would think I would write, right? It's If Veggie Tales met pro wrestling, you would get Food Fights. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pizza party. Um, really excited uh, for the book to be out. Thank you again for um, generously letting me push that among all of our listeners. Of course. When one of us is doing something, that means we're all on the ground together. We're the OTM fam over here. So, Ian, any final remarks? You're going to be attending your very first SummerSlam I think is this your first ever WWE pay per view as well? Um, actually, I think you're right. I wow. think it is. Talk, so this is big. It's it's Dope. not a bad way going into doing that with going into SummerSlam. I mean, 
could be under better circumstances, but I mean, you know what? I needless to say, I'm excited. It's going to be a fun weekend. Uh, the drives will be worth it. Uh, but I can't wait. Can't wait to bull with the boys, hang out in Detroit, Rock City. And I've never been to Detroit. So also another thing. Yes, sir. I don't think I've ever been to downtown Detroit. I've been around Who Detroit. Whoever has a reason to go to Detroit. Come, for oh, SummerSlam. Yeah, that's what, come on, boys. And to visit Rat, of course. I mean, I guess that's oh, yeah. another well, reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. all right, guys. Uh, Tucky, why don't you send us home? Ladies and gentlemen, we got a great SummerSlam card coming at you, coming at us this weekend. It's a great time to be a wrestling fan. A lot of matches on this card. Could be a coin toss, and uh, that makes for good viewing. Myself, Mr. OTM, the part-timer, and Ryan Vogus will be in attendance. It's going to be a great time. Make sure you tune into our social media on TikTok, Instagram, um, and Facebook, at Pot on the Mark, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button. Do all the things and help us out. Uh, over 100 episodes in, over three years uh, slinging product here on the podcast channel. Uh, and it's been a great ride. Make sure you visit on the markwrestlingpodcast.com enter code summer for 10% off. Use that 10% savings to head over to Amazon and buy food fights <laughs> and uh, you're just you're set up for a great weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the On the Mark Wrestling podcast. podcast.